All right, guys, welcome back to American Heritage Garage. In today's episode, we're digging into this 1966 Ford F100. Now, normally I start my videos off with a walk around as soon as we get the vehicle into the shop. This one's a little different. Um, I had the plans to knock out a couple small things um, before we got into some of the major work uh, that we're going to do to this thing, but the small things kind of turn into big things because that's just how stuff happens. So real quick, here's what we plan on doing to this thing. It's a manual, uh, it has manual steering. Um, so the customer wants power steering put in. We are not going to do a Crown Vic or Mustang 2 swap. We're going to put a um, later model power steering gearbox in, a power steering pump from a Ford FE390 uh, and all the accoutrement that go with that. Um, there's some other things that kind of roll into that. Because we're making that switch, this is a three on the tree vehicle. Uh, we're not gonna be able to use, at least from what I can tell right now, we're not gonna be able to use the three on the tree column. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're either gonna have to put an aftermarket column in or try to find a shorter Ford column, we'll see. Um, it had a pretty nasty exhaust leak on the driver's side right at the manifold. Uh, and if you saw my little short snippet I just put out, or I put out the other day, um, I had two manifold bolts break on me. Um, so out of whatever it is, 16 bolts or whatever, uh, I had two break. So I did pretty good. Um, I'm probably not going to do the right answer to get those out, but we'll kind of ignore that for right now. Because to get that work done, I need to start the power steering uh, swap here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the column out and I'm going to get the gearbox out. Um, some other little stuff I did, I rebuilt the carb. Uh, they had the heater hoses just routed in a circle, right? Uh, so I rerouted the heater hoses properly. Uh, we'll see if the heater core doesn't leak. I'm not sure. Uh, we have to put a new harmonic balancer on it to accept the power steering belt. Uh, I replaced the uh, carb spacer. So there's been a couple little things that I've already done uh, because I was just trying to get those out of the way because I just really didn't care to show you guys all that nonsense little stuff, not in this specific video. But here we are. Uh, and like I said, the little stuff turned into big stuff. And so now I'm just rolling right along. So uh, let's go take a look at this thing and I'll show you where I'm at. Okay guys, so we're on the driver's side of the vehicle here. Um, as you can see, the exhaust manifold's off. Um, the bolts that broke were on the number five and the number eight uh, exhaust side here, exhaust port. Uh, they broke, actually it's kind of funny. It was a real small, like quarter inch that broke. Um, so I'll tell you about it real quick. The right answer would be to pull the cylinder head uh, put it on the bench, drill it out, try to use an extractor or something of that nature. Uh, they're not broke flush. If they were broke flush, I'd use the old weld the nut on trick, get it super hot and try to back it off. Um, but they're not broke flush. They're broke off inside the holes here. So, um, yeah, it's not quite as easy. So, actually, I haven't quite formulated my plan, but I'm really going to try to avoid taking the cylinder heads off if I can. There's nothing wrong with the engine. The engine runs fine. Um, so if I can avoid breaking any of these seals loose, you know, your head gaskets and intake gaskets and stuff, I'm going to try and avoid that. But anyway, uh, I'm not concerned about that right now. So as we're looking here, you're going to see your manual steering box here. Okay. Here's your rag joint right here. Then your steering column as it goes into the uh, firewall. Again, here's your uh, shift linkage. The three on the tree comes out of the column here. Um, there's a plate up on the firewall, three bolts, and then a clamp here. 
and then two screws on the inside will remove the um, bolt at the gearbox and take the linkage off and we should be able to just to slip the column out uh, and then there's the clamp underneath the dashboard so once that's cleared out of the way I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna get these bolts out uh, these broken bolts so oh and the other step we have to do we have to remove the pitman arm from uh, the lower side of the steering box here um, this is kind of the start of the process like I said, I haven't decided if I'm going to get a, an aftermarket or a Ford steering column. We'll kind of, we'll kind of play that by ear as it, as it goes. Um, the power steering box, and once I get this one out, I'll lay them, I lay them next to each other and show you. But it's considerably longer here, from here to here, because of the power steering mechanism inside the box. So basically, it would touch where the column is here. So the column needs to go that way towards the, the seat, but we can't shift the whole column for a couple reasons. One, it would be in your chest. Two, the linkage for the shifters right here. So uh, this has been done many different ways. Uh, if you go search around on the internet, you know, again, this is a 66. So if you look up 66 Ford F100 power steering conversion, there, there's different ways to do it. Uh, I'm gonna kind of play by my own drum here and, and fabricate up some stuff and make it work. Um, and we haven't even talked about the lines and different stuff like that. Um, our, our fittings for the power steering for the return and the pressure side are going to be somewhere about up here. And so those lines are going to have to make their way all the way up to this area. So um, we'll, we'll have to kind of come up with some situations. Originally, I was going to put power brakes on it. Um, but the customer, we did some work on the brakes. Actually, they had some work done on the brakes um themselves and they decided that the manual brakes weren't that bad so we're not going to put a booster in a in a two chamber master cylinder on it we're just going to let that go for right now uh, some other little things we're going to do is the up here we're going to fix the uh, windshield washer sprayer so it's got some some spray when you're using the windshield wipers again we rerouted the heater hoses i rebuilt the carb uh, so once i get this exhaust debacle fixed and uh, stuff like that. This thing should be pretty well good to go. Uh, it needed exhaust gaskets anyway. Down at the flange for the, at the pipe was getting pretty crappy. And like I said, this had blown out. Uh, it had blown out so much that down here, it actually started to peel back the paint on the block. So it needed it. Uh, it's just, hey, this is how it goes. You're always gonna run into something. So now we just gotta be creative and try and, uh, try and get those out without damaging anything. I mean, one way we can do it, obviously these are threaded holes on these ears. One way we could do it is just drill this out a little wider and run a bolt through, put a nut and a lock washer and just hold it together like that, clamping force style as opposed to threading in. I'm not opposed to it. It's not the right way to do it, but it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, this isn't like a factory original truck or anything like that. This isn't even the original engine. So, I mean, it's, like I said, not the right way, but it will work and it will be 100% uh, functional and function is where we're at with this truck. We're not, uh, we're not doing like a frame off factory restoration or anything. Uh, the truck's actually really nice. Like I said, I'm gonna end up doing this backwards and I will, uh, I'll do a walk around of the truck when it's done instead of before we started. So um, let's go underneath and take a look at that pitman arm. Before we get started on the pitman arm, guys, I wanted to show you um, the tool I use to actually pull the pitman arm. Um, this is what they call a conical pitman arm puller, okay? It obviously looks kind of like a cone. Um, here's your cutout, right? It's a little hard to see from that angle. So you're going to slip this up and over, so this will be up around the gearbox side, and then... Um, your pin here is going to push down on the actual spline shaft right in the center of it and it'll draw it out. These pullers, I guarantee it, 100% guarantee, these pullers will work for you better than any other puller you've ever tried to use for one of these pitman arms. A lot of times they are stubborn, stuck on there kind of things. This gives you a lot more contact surface, okay? so. 
with your two arm or three arm or four, whatever, however many arm pullers, they're only pulling from two points. This is almost pulling from like half to three quarters of the actual pitman arm surface area. It will draw these off in no time. As long as you have good air supply and a strong impact, it will pull those pitman arms every time, okay? Uh, just Google conical pitman arm puller if you're looking for one. They come in two sizes, okay? If you're looking for one, they'll be on wherever, Amazon or wherever you buy your tools from. These things are a necessity. So um, I'm gonna use a 36 millimeter socket. Don't ask me why, that seems to fit the best. Uh, but after I clean all the road grime and stuff off the nut that holds the pitman arm on, um, 36 millimeter was, I mean, I don't have all that much big stuff. I have some three quarter drive stuff, but in half inch drive, I have wheel bearing nut sockets and the 36 millimeter worked. So let's uh, set the camera up underneath here and I'll pull this thing down. Okay, so here's your pitman arm right here. Connects to your steering linkage right here, tie rod ends, etc., etc. What we're trying to do is remove this from the gearbox. Okay, so we'll take this nut off again. I don't know why, but 36 millimeter fits pretty good. So we're going to hammer on this thing, see if it'll come off. I'm hoping that all the grease and oil and road grime will make it real easy. Yep, it did. Okay, washer stuck in there. We'll get that later. So now our next step is going to be installing our pitman arm puller. Okay, so it's going to slip over this way. And I'll show you a little better once I get it down. And we're going to thread this up and make sure that the, the point sits right in the divot at the end of the uh, steering box shaft. So it's nice in there. So now we're going righty tighty with this. And we're just gonna hammer on it and hope it pops right off, fingers crossed. Yep, good deal. So if you can see here, to show you how this thing fits over the end of the pitman arm. Okay, it just slips over like that and pulls down, right? Um, you can see how much contact surface it work, it gets there. So, good tool. Um, yeah, that joint's not that great, but we'll deal with that some other time. Um, so now we're going to head back up and we need to disconnect the steering shaft, unbolt the column from the vehicle itself, and remove the shifter linkage. And that's probably about everything. Then we'll pull the column out and go from there. So I removed the um, clamp bolt that holds it onto the steering, or that holds the, the end of the steering shaft onto the gearbox. There's this clamp here. I release that so now the shaft can move in and out. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we have three bolts here, a clamp here, a couple on the inside. So we'll get these out of the way. Yeah. 
We got that guy out of the way. So now I got to jump in from the inside, get this piece off, and then we will undo the clamps on the, actually I'll do that right now while I'm under here. Okay, so we're going to reach in here, it looked good on paper. I thought I'd be able to pull it out of there with my needle nose. But apparently I can't squeeze hard enough because I have wimpy hands. Not going to happen. There we go. Okay, so I got the other clip off. It wasn't different, it was just more stubborn. So, they are salvageable if we end up, for some weird reason, being able to use the three on the tree, but I don't think we will be, so that's not much of a worry. So here's our, here's our shifter right there. So like I said, last thing, get the two off here, and then we'll uh, drop the column at the bolt, or at the bracket, and uh, very carefully get the column out of there. Okay, so if you can see, and this is gonna be a little awkward, there's four 3 8 bolts holding this plate on here. So we'll get the two that are more difficult. Maybe, maybe need an extension. not to damage too much of the insulation here but some we're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit that's just all there is to it but we'll get it fixed up so there's that plate and the gasket will come with it now there's a bolt here and a bolt here the right size helps and this is probably going to mess my light up because it's leaning on the column but there's one there and this should drop the column down So now the column's just resting, so I'm going to come over to the other side and get the column out. Okay guys, so here's our column, column wiring. A couple quick things I did when I was off camera was um, I, this thing's got this knob on it. I, uh, I aligned up our shift linkage here. Okay, there's our shift linkage. I lined that up so it could come through the firewall. I made sure this would come off and then I unplugged the wiring. Um, Basically, what we're going to do, well, I'm not sure yet. I got, a lot of, I got a lot of looking to do to figure out how we're going to make this work, how I want it to work. 
I don't know if I can cut back the shaft and remove the linkage out of here. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, but basically our measurement and shaft, your a steering column is measured from the end of the bell to the end of the housing down here. Um, this is whatever, I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll, we'll take a measurement once the new gearbox is in and we figure out um, how far towards the firewall that thing's gonna be. Um, and if we're gonna have to kind of come up with our own joint down here, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. I know for a fact that the original steering wheel is gonna have to stay with the truck. So we'll have to make that work. It looks like this rubber boot isn't any good. Um, but yeah, we got a little, we got a little hunt, we got a little hunting to do. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of figure it out. All right, so I've removed the gearbox. Um, three bolts, one, two, three, on the outside of the frame rail. Uh, and once everything's disconnected from the gearbox, it pretty much just rests in there. And then you can either take it out from the bottom if there's enough room. In this case, I took it out from the top. Uh, so that's all freed and cleared in there. Um, I'm going to show you the difference between the two gearboxes now. So what we're looking at here is this is the manual steering box that came out of the truck. This is the new power steering gearbox. So as you can see, we have some length difference from this end to this end. Then if we turn them this way, then you can see, of course, because of the power steering assembly and the, the fluid assembly, we got a lot of, a lot of length difference from where the steering shaft actually comes in to the end of the box on the two. Um, so this length is really what's causing us the issue. Uh, the extra inch or so this way, we'll deal with that when that, uh, when that time comes. Also, where the pitman arm mounts, um, you're like a quarter of an inch bigger on the power steering box than on the manual box. So that's something we're gonna, we're gonna have to work out whether we get a new pitman arm or something, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. And then just, I'm hoping the linkage is going to work. So we'll see. Uh, next thing I want to address is the column. Uh, I had mentioned I was going to buy a new column for this truck or an aftermarket column. Um, but I think I have an idea. So let's talk about that. So here's the steering column. Um, what I did was take the rag joint apart and then I used a puller and I took the rag joint coupler. It was tough. It splined onto the end of the steering shaft, but uh, put some heat around it and pulled it off here. It's just pressed on. And then at that point, you're able to take the column apart. So pretty much from here, the column just slips off the steering shaft. So for right now, this can get set aside. So what we're gonna look at with this is once we get the new gearbox in, I wanna see exactly where this kind of lines up. And I think I can actually cut this, this housing down. Um, the shift tube inside here, if you can see, is I'm Shifting this along moves everything right down here, the linkage. But I think I can just remove the shifter and um, cut the tube, put the new bearing assembly in the bottom of it, and then we'll cut the shaft that I just moved out of the way. Um, what I may have to do is section this. So leave the end but section out a center, a portion in the middle here. We'll see, I'm not 100% sure. I need to kind of look at it. Uh, I gotta get that bearing carrier out of the bottom, but uh, I think we can actually keep the original column, which I kind of want to do if I have that option, and it'll save some money most likely in the long run. Um, and we'll section the steering shaft out too. That way we can keep the splines at the end. Um, you just gotta weld it really good, make it a nice strong weld. That's no big deal. Um, some people frown upon it, but there's nothing wrong with it. 
Uh, that way we keep the original wiring. We don't have to mess around with any of that stuff. The turn signals will all be guaranteed to work and it's just the better option if we can make it happen. So that's kind of my goal. We'll, uh, we'll play it by ear. Uh, I need to spend some time on the, uh, on those exhaust manifold bolts and see if I can't get those out and we'll, uh, get the gearbox mounted and start taking some measurements. So yeah, uh, that's probably going to wrap it up here uh for today for part one so um as always guys i appreciate you watching please comment please subscribe if you haven't um we got some cool stuff coming up with this we uh we're going to tear into the iraq engine here pretty soon so i'm excited moving right along um hope everybody's staying safe thanksgiving's coming up guys you got to make your own decisions i'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do uh it's a crazy world out there right now it's almost hard to know what the truth is. So anyway, not to get on my high horse, but I hope you're all doing safe. I hope your families are safe and well. Um, stay tuned for part two of the F100 power steering, guys. Until next time, we'll see you out here at American Heritage Garage.